Hey guys, I'm Megan. I'm a carpenter and a remodeler. Today we're gonna to talk about fences. If you wanna add a little bit of privacy to your yard, you can build a shadow box fence. We've already gone and checked our local codes and regulations and had our lot surveyed to find our property line. Make sure your fence is within your property line. The last thing to remember is to call your local utility companies and have them lay out all of your underground lines. Our wood fence is component built. This means the pickets and boards are put on piece by piece. This will allow the fence to follow the contour of the land. Shadow box fences alternate pickets on each side so that you're able to see through at an angle. For complete privacy, however, attach the pickets tight together on just one side. No matter what fence style you pick, make sure you start your layout with string and a batter board. I'm just kind of eyeballing where this goes. Batter boards are just made out of furring strips. And then this allows you to move your string line back and forth. This one, again, I'm just eyeballing off the house there. After you do that, you wanna make sure your string line is six inches off of your property line. So I'm just gonna pull some extra around and cut it off. And kinda eyeball six inches off of our stake right there. And if I need to, I can move it around after I measure. So just take your tape. There you go, six inches. So now I'm gonna pull the other string from that side to this batter board. Give it a little knot. Kind of adjust it so it's close to your line. You can go back and do some fine tuning later. And just like before, I'm gonna give a little slack here. Cut off the excess and tie it tight. Then continue running the strings around the whole fence layout. For tips on squaring the corners, you can watch our fence planning video. When you're laying out the size to get the best appearance, try to get full pickets at the corners and also use full pickets on the gate. Adjust the post spacing so the boards will be flush to the inside of the entryway. For our five and a half inch boards, they will overlap one inch. So the boards will be spaced three and a half inches between. Once we have our fence line established, we can start marking out our spacing for our post holes. We have an eight foot gate going in here. So I'm gonna pull eight feet off of my stake and make sure that your tape measure is level. Don't follow the slope of the ground. When you're setting your stake, you wanna make sure you're half the width of the post away from your string line. That way, when the post goes in, it'll be flush with your string. Now you can just continue on down the line. Typical post spacing is between six and eight feet. Once you're done setting your stakes, you can mark the lines on your batter boards. Then remove your lines so it makes it easier to dig your holes. I'm gonna transfer my layout line mark to the wall here, just in case I need to remove my batter board when I'm digging my hole. When you're setting your posts, make sure they're just below the frost line and your hole should be three times the thickness of your posts. And it helps to have a little bit of help to dig these holes. Right here? Yep, that works. And we're gonna just outline where our hole's gonna go. And we're using a shovel and a post hole digger since we're near the house. Yep. Yeah. So we've got our first hole dug. And I'm gonna use marking paint on the rest of my stakes just so I'm sure I can find the hole. And to make quick work of a lot of holes, a power auger is perfect for the job. Try not to push down on the auger. Let the weight of the machine do the work.
When the holes are dug, we can start setting our posts. We're gonna first string up our line to make sure our posts are straight. Now we'll tie the strings on the batter boards right over the marks we made. We'll start with about six inches of dry concrete in the bottom of the hole. Set the post in the hole and make sure it's plumb. We'll hold it in place with braces. Make sure you mix the concrete according to the manufacturer's directions. After we've done that, we'll fill around the post with the concrete. We'll keep it a couple inches below ground level and make sure we slope it away from the post. Then let it cure following the directions. Follow the same steps to install the rest of your posts. This process might take a couple of days. Once all of your posts are set and the concrete is cured, we can start taking off our batter boards and our bracing. Our pickets are six foot, so we're gonna go just under that at five foot eight for the top of our rail. So you measure from the ground up five foot eight and make a mark. And so we remember where our two by four is gonna go. We're gonna put an X underneath our line. And then we'll measure up from the ground nine and a half inches and an X down. That way the bottom of our rail will be at five or at six inches. Yep. And remember, it has to go on an angle to follow your land. And we're gonna cut it long. We're gonna cut it at 43 inches and we'll come back later and trim up the edge. So I'm just gonna measure this at 43. Keep going a little bit more, yeah. And I'm gonna cut it using a circular saw. This is when having an extra hand really helps. Good. Good. All right. Okay. Now we'll attach our bottom with screws. All right, now we can mark out where our middle rail goes. We're just gonna find the height in between, which is 55 and a half. So half of that is 27 and three quarters. That's the center of our two by four. So we wanna go up another inch and three quarters to find the top of our two by four. An inch and three quarter from this mark? Yes, inch and three quarter up. All right. Just make a mark. And we're doing our rails on the outside of our posts instead of in between. This will add a lot of stability to the fence. I'm gonna cut the ends of my rails off with a reciprocating saw. And as long as you have your guard close and tight with your four x four, you'll be able to cut your two x four off as flush to your four x four as possible. All right, now we can just continue installing our rails. Now that we've finished our short sections of fence, we can move on to our longer ones. This first section is a little bit more sloped than the rest, so we're gonna use shorter boards just to kind of match the slope a little better. And he's just gonna match where that two by four is already up there, and we're gonna overhang that two by four, so we just cut it off to match our angle. And be sure to split your four by four, because this right here is where you'll screw your other two by four into. Since our slope is a little bit more gradual here, we can start installing longer rails. And instead of measuring every single post, we'll just take our measurement here and transfer it down three or four posts and run a string line 
from the bottom of our top rail to the bottom of our top rail down there where he's gonna measure. And this way, once he has it up, all I have to do is mark where the string is versus measuring every single post. And remember, X above, because we're marking the bottom so we can see it. And then you just do the same thing with the bottom and the middle. Now that the ground has leveled off some, we can install this section of rails in one continuous run. We're using our string line again, so we don't have to measure every single post. Now that we have the tops marked, we can mark the middles. Moving on to the bottoms. After all of your posts are marked, you can start installing all of your rails. Here where the ground is more level, we'll span three posts, staggering the boards for added strength. After the rails are installed, we'll cut the post tops. All right, our rails are installed and our posts are cut. So now we can start installing our pickets. And then I'm using just a two by four on the bottom. This is because we're supposed to have an inch to two inches of space. A two by four is an inch and a half when it's on its side like this. So it's flush, I'm just gonna nail it in. Once this board is installed, we can move on to the other side. We're actually gonna put the board on the adjacent side on first, and this is gonna be flush with our two by four. Our next board here is gonna go flush with the outside of our picket, so it's gonna overlap this picket. Now this run is so short that we're just gonna make sure we have three full pickets here. So the middle one, we're just gonna split the difference. Okay. All right, we've rounded the corner. So now we can start installing our pickets on the long run of fence here. I have this fancy little spacer, which is just a two by four with a little two by four block on the back. And that allows us to sit on the top rail and have equal spacing between our pickets. So that's gonna stay in place. Nick's gonna hold it there. And just nail it in. Don't forget to use a spacer at the bottom. Now we're using nails, but you can use staples or screws as long as they're rated for pressure treated material. And use a level frequently to make sure the pickets are plump. Now that we've hit a level part of our yard, we can string a string line for the tops of our pickets. We've attached a picket at the very corner of our run here, and Nick's gonna put a nail in it, and he's gonna tie the string, and I'll tie the string onto my nail and that way, when we attach the pickets, the tops will be aligned. So you just put the board on your rails there and just touch it lightly and then drop slightly below it. That way you know you're not pushing it up. Now we can install our pickets on the inside of our fence. So I'm just gonna plumb up my first picket here and I'm just looking to cover the hole here. Once I get it plumbed up, then I can shoot it in. But first, if you see at the bottom, I have a little shim of scrap material there, 
and all that is doing is lifting my picket up so it's not any higher or lower than these outside pickets. Because of this corner post, I had to rip this board down to fit. And you see I added a little dog ear to match. I'm gonna start installing this first picket tied up against my post here. And Nick is holding a two by four at the top so I can align the tops of our pickets. So we're using this top two by four because the slope of the yard on this side of the fence makes it a little difficult for the bottom spacer. Now when you come to a post like this, all you have to do is notch your picket out so it fits around it. Now we've reached the point in the yard where our slope is pretty gradual and we can do our string line trick again to align the tops of our pickets. The boards might be a little bit green from the weather resistant treatment, but don't worry, that green will fade over time. So now we can install our last run of pickets. What we're doing is installing a temporary picket. We're just screwing it in. This is to hold our string line to align our tops. And we're overlapping and keeping it flush. We've already attached one at the other end here with a nail in it. So we'll just run our string line across like we did before. And while Nick's tying the string off, we can address where the gate goes. The big thing about the gate is that the hinges, you want them to go into a solid piece of wood. So we're gonna infill from this two by four to this two by four with another two by four. You don't want your screws going into the end grain of the wood. So I'm just gonna hold this two by four here and mark the back angle. So we get a nice tight fit. So then we'll just cut that and install it. We'll start with a full picket at our gate post. We'll install it just like we have been, aligning the top of the picket with the string line and flushing it out with the post. All good? Yep. Because of the contour of the land, we didn't use our bottom spacer. We'll cut this last picket after we infill the rest. That way we keep our string line intact. So on this side, you'll see that the picket's a little tall. That's just because the ground slopes up a lot right at the house here. So a little trick, what we're gonna do is flip it around, set it on our spacer, and we're gonna mark the low side of our line. And you're just gonna cut a 90 degree cut across there. Now we added this temporary board at the end to hold our string line, but it's too big for the space and our gap is too small, so we have to rip it down. And what we'll do is we'll just measure our spacing, which is three and a half inches, and we'll transfer that mark over to our board, three and a half inches. What's left here is what we're gonna rip down. Now we'll finish the inside pickets. Once the pickets are installed, we can start building our gates. Like any gate, we're gonna build a square frame out of two by fours using a gate building kit. What we're gonna do is install the frame first and then put the pickets on following the contour of the land.
One thing to remember is to take into account your hinge spacing and your latch spacing. So this hinge is about a half an inch. And then we're gonna give another quarter of an inch or so for our latch. And because of the latch we're using, we kind of need to build out this corner a little bit. Now when you're measuring, that's where your three quarters of an inch comes in. I'm gonna be measuring from our shim here, our build out piece, to the post. I have 47 and a half inches, so take off three quarter and we'll have 46 and three quarters inches. The height of the frame can kind of be anywhere in between these rails. So I'm gonna pick 56 inches. I think that'll work out great. Now we'll cut all of our pieces for our frame. So because of our little weld we have going on at our hinge here, we need to kind of miter or chamfer our edge right here. Right there, and then this board also. Using a gate building kit not only makes this project easier, it will also prevent the gate from sagging over time. So now when we're cutting our middle brace, we'll find the middle of our frame. So half of 56 is two foot four. And just mark it. And we'll do the same over here. Thank you. That'll be the center of our two by four when we put it in. And our in-between will be 39 and a half. The best way to do this is to start off going straight. And once you get a little bit of a hole going, then you tilt your screw in. Now we'll go hang it. First, we're just gonna mark our holes and I'll pre-drill them. Now we just install the pickets. And we'll still use the string line as a guide. Now we'll do the other side. First, install the post side of the latch. And then the gate side. After you've finished building your fence, wait a few months before sanding or painting. Now you'll have a new wood fence and a new look for your backyard. Want more great ideas and how-tos? Go to lowes.com slash how-to.